Okay. So before we proceed to our next lesson, which has something to do with the last topic that we have tackled, no? last meeting. Okay, so let's have first a short recap of what we have tackled no last meeting. Okay, so what was our last lesson? Can someone or somebody tell me what is it all about? Anyone? What was our topic last meeting? All about what? Anyone? All about introduction to world literature. Diba? We do have three features, diba? the classic, the masterpiece, as well as the uh, windows no, to uh, world. Okay, so classic, masterpiece, and windows the world. We also tackled so the story or the epic poem entitled The Iliad and the Odyssey okay, by Homer, which is a blind poet. Okay? So the Iliad and the Odyssey. So kung pamilya kayo, yun yung mga napanood ninyo sa Troy, no, the Trojan War. Okay? And also you have uh, done your activity no, about a low art no, by Margaret Artwood, wherein it is a story of the Odyssey in Penelope's perspective. Okay, in a female perspective. Okay, so that is an example of what we call now a metafiction or a uh, historiographic metafiction. Okay, before we go to what a historiographic metafiction is, let us first define what is metafiction. Okay, so when we say metafiction, it is a fiction about fiction. Okay, so there is a certain or there is a particular fiction. Okay, and then... um. Out from that certain fiction, there will be another fiction. Okay, so that is metafiction. No fiction about fiction. Okay, so to further discuss, now what is all about, or what are some examples of it, no, of metafiction, and what are the deeper meanings of it? Ba? Okay, so kindly watch this video for a while. Exploring Metafiction, the language and features of metafiction and the practice of metafictive devices. The word meta means beyond or transcending, so metafiction means above or beyond fiction. It can also be referred to as fiction about fiction. Metafiction is not a new phenomenon by any means. It can be traced as far back as the 14th century with Homer's The Odyssey and Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Other historical examples include Don Quixote, Hamlet, and the history of Tom Jones. These are some of the characteristics of metafiction. Blurred lines between fiction and reality. The story examines the elements of fiction itself. Involvement of the author intrusions in the narrative, and rejections of a conventional plot. I chose the book, Would You Like to Play Hide and Seek in this book with lovable furry old Grover. It's written by John Stone and illustrated by Michael Smolin. I chose this book because it's one of my childhood favorites and it's a great example of metafiction. In the story, Grover invites the reader to play hide-and-seek with him. Grover soon discovers that the confines of the pages make it difficult to hide. He tries to disappear in the corners of the book, paints the pages blue, and uses big word bubbles to hide behind. In the end, Grover pleads with the reader to tell him he is hidden. This book contains many metafictional elements. Let's take a look at a few of them. The author uses Grover to speak to the reader by asking them to engage in a game with him. The book is filled with questions that engage the reader, such as, can you see me now? And please say yes. The illustrations are made to look like Grover is tearing and taping the pages to hide behind. This makes it seem as though Grover is climbing out of the book. The color and size of the font changes as well. 
Grover is engaging the reader as a friend that he wants to play hide and seek with. Page after page he is determined to hide from you and repeatedly comments on how badly he wants to be hidden. This is a non-traditional story about playing a game with Grover. The story leaps off the page and invites the reader to be a part of it. Is there a link between metafiction and postmodern literature? First, let's look at some of the characteristics of postmodern literature. Irony, playfulness and black humor, pastiche, intertextuality, temporal distortion, faction, magical realism, and participation. Postmodern literature can include many ironic and humorous elements. Authors may use pastiche to create a new narrative voice that combines previous genres such as science fiction or fictional history. Faction may also be used to blur the lines between fact and fiction. Nonlinear timelines are also common. The use of participation bridges the gap between the reader and the author and involves the reader in the storyline. Magical realism may be used to introduce impossible elements into the story. This may include dreams, complicated plots, and fairy tales coming to life. Metafiction is a common literary device used by postmodern authors. However, the two are not one and the same. Although there can be a great deal of crossover, some books are either or, not both. The book Gorilla by Anthony Brown is an example of postmodern literature, however, it does not follow metafictional characteristics. There is a conventional plot, the narrator does not speak directly to the reader, and the layout is very traditional. On the other hand, The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio was written in 1353 and is a story about storytelling. Although this predates the postmodern era, Boccaccio included various metafictional elements in this book, such as making himself a character in the story. As you can see, a postmodern book can be written without traces of metafiction, and metafiction can be found in books that predate the postmodern era. They go hand in hand nicely, but they can also stand alone. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching. using power. That's all about metafiction. So when we say metafiction, this is a beyond fiction or fiction about fiction. Okay, so we're in, uh, there is a certain or particular fiction, okay, wherein you can um, add or you can create additional story out of that certain fiction, wherein uh, you, the author of that certain fiction, try not to convey the reader itself. Okay, so wherein, parang ikaw mismo, yung character mismo, on sa story na yun, yung makikipag-usap dun sa reader niya, just like in the example, no? kay Grover. Okay, so that is the Sesame Street, di ba? That is a fiction. Then out from that, nagumawa pa siya ng isa, na medyo mahaba yung title niya. Okay, and then, kung gusto daw makipaglaro sa kanya ng hide and seek, and then the storyline is not the usual or the usual plot na meron yung mga story. Pag, uh, unlike certain story na merong dito, flow ng narration, this a story ni Grover, kung saan gusto niya makipaglaro ng hide and seek, is directly kinakausap niya yung uh, reader niya. Okay, nagiging interactive, no? nagiging engaging yung story. So meaning, uh, from a per different perspective yung naging story. Okay, kung yung perspective nung, uh, let's say for example, this is a mystery from the perspective of the author. What if no, the story will be from the perspective of Clover? Okay, so kagaya na lang din sa ibang story. Let's say, for example, in The Little Red Riding Hood. No? And that yung meron dung wolf, di ba? Okay, so The Little Red Riding Hood may be bad wolf. Okay, so with that, alam, hindi pala. Sa Little Red Riding Hood, ang magiging uh, tema once nagagawing metafiction siya is what will be the, another story or the story if no, hindi mangyagaling yung, uh, yung story background or yung mismong point of view no kay Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, ganun din naman sa Three Little Pigs. Let's say, for example, in that certain story, the perspective naman ngayon ng wolf, okay, so ano kayang magiging uh, story behind that fiction? 
Okay, so common din naman kasi alam na natin ay nangyari sa Trinidad Peaks. Okay, and then the, and then the wolf. Okay, so what if ang magiging story is from the perspective of um, of the wolf, no, and not on the perspective of the little pig. Okay, so later on you will do that. No? But before that, let us first discuss what is historiographic metafiction. Okay, so when we say historiographic metafiction, yung nakaraang ginawa nyo, entitled The Low Art, no, ni, Mar ni Margaret Artwood, yung Penelope's perspective, di ba, about the Odysseus, or about the Odyssey ni Odysseus. Okay, that is an example of historiographic metafiction. Okay, so when we say historiographic metafiction, these are fictions which is prominent or well-known during that time. Okay, and then it is on a different perspective. Diba? Napanood nyo or napakinggan nyo naman yung doon the Odyssey. Okay, so iba yung kwento pagdating kay, uh, sa pagdating sa low art no, ni Margaret Artwood for in it is Penelope's perspective na. Okay, so the story was on the Penelope's perspective. Okay, so meaning that text low art by Margaret Artwood was well, an example of historiog historiographic metafiction, which was elaborated on by Linda Hatchon. So, si Linda Hatchon is an author, no, a postmodernist author, okay, in 1988. Okay, so, yun ay sinabi niya sa kanyang article na historiographic metafiction, the pastime of pastime. Okay, kung saan, so, she traces how both history as well as literature were once considered branches of the same tree of learning. Okay, unlike today, medyo magkaiba na. Okay? So, yung history, pati yung uh, literature. Another one. So, when we say historiographic metafiction, okay, so according to Hilda Alinda Hachan, it is a strategy that tries to shift perspectives that have come from received ideologies that have been traditionally depicted by history and literature. So when we say historiographic metafiction, it tries to destabilize. No? It receives notions of both history and fiction. Kaya nga, so historiographic metafiction. Okay, and it also, direct or it, it also directly confront no, the past of literature. So, bakit ito ginagawa? Bakit ginagawa yung ganitong klase ng metafiction? Okay, so this is done to make readers think no, about the validity of history. No, it makes you wonder about the different voices in histories or in history that have not been heard. No, and how to allow this ghostly voice or voices to speak to the literature. Okay, just like uh, nga, no, in the story of the Odyssey. Okay? Diba, doon naman sa uh, low art by Margaret Artwood. Okay? So, ang naging tema doon is the point of view of Penelope no, in uh, Odysseus' life, not during the Odyssey. Okay? So, unlike in a true story, diba, there are, there are characters in there. Okay? Pero hindi nagsasalita, walang own perspective yung character, which is si Penelope. Okay? Here, it will make you wonder about the different voices in history. Pwede yung gawaan ng sariling kwete, kung sa tingin ninyo, what will be the story or what the story will be about? So, if so yung character na to mismo, yung magiging, o yung magiging perspective is sa character na to mismo. Okay? So, kay, kagaya nga nung kay The Odyssey, no, sa perspective ni Penelope, kinuha yung, uh, ito, yung historiographic metafiction na yun, which is entitled A Low Art no, by Margaret Art. So, ganun lang natin pag metafiction, so, para tayong gumagawa ng another story from a certain fiction, kaya nga fiction about fiction, na from a certain fiction, particular fiction, kaya gawa tayong another fiction na from a different perspective naman. Okay, so ganun yung ating historiographic metafiction. Okay, so para gawin yung historiographic metafiction, I would like you to ponder on this first. Okay, so makinig, are you familiar with the classic tale Three Little Pigs? the perspective of the three big brothers who were hunted by the bad wolf. Okay, so alam niyo naman yung kwento na yun, di ba? Three little pigs. Now, it's your turn, it's your turn to make a little tale telling. Okay? So make a historiographic metafiction of the tale, three little pigs, in the perspective of the bad wolf. So make your story short and simple and be creative. So I don't need a long story. Okay? Of the... Uh, 
of the little the pigs, no, in the perspective of the big bad wolf or the bad wolf. Okay, so ano gagawin? You are going to narrate, okay, a story or retell the story of three little pigs, but in the perspective of the bad wolf. Okay, so not the usual story, ha, kasi yung usual story perspective yun ng three little pigs. Okay, you know, kung saan, di ba, nagkaroon ng bahay. Lo, hanggang sa likuran ng bahay na bato sa dulo, rain, hindi na ngayon nagawang sirain ng bad wolf. Okay, now, no, gagawa kayo, it's, turn, it's your turn to make a little telltelling kayo mismo ang magre-retell ng story that the little pigs in the perspective naman of the bad wolf. Okay, what will be the story na kung yung perspective ay magpupunta kay bad wolf? Okay, so meaning you are going to uh, create no, a story wait mo tayo sa Jenya. Allow me to share the activity first. Okay. You can kindly go to your Jenya account and then kindly look for 21st century lit historiographic metafiction activity. Okay, so here are the instructions. Okay, yun ang nakalagay na rin doon kanina sa PowerPoint. So no need to attach file. Kahit hindi na kayo mag-attach file. So just type your story on the typing box provided. Na meron naman typing box doon, di ba? Hindi na na kailangan mag-attach ng file. Okay, para mas madali na din siya kaya nita-type na lang doon. Again, you are just going to retell the story of three little pigs in the big bad wolf or the bad wolf um, perspective. Okay, ano yung sa tingin niyo magiging story? No, kung yung perspective ng bad wolf ang masusunod. So meaning, i-retell niyo yung story, gagawa kayo ng story. Out of, from that fiction, gagawa kayo another fiction, okay, of three little pigs naman on the perspective of the bad wolf. Okay? So you may now start doing your activity. So kahit uh, may iksi lang, no? kasing iksi lang din yung story ng three little pigs. Okay? But then again, you're going to retell it no, in a different way. Kasi perspective yun ng bad wolf. Okay? So parang siya naman ngayon yung magiging, uh, what we call this, yung magiging protagonist. Okay? Siya so yung magiging protagonist o yung bida ng story. Okay? So you may now start doing your activity. Okay? 